Hey Swifters, welcome back to another Swift Racing League Recon video, and today we're going to be talking about Race 3 of Round 2, and that is going to be Two Bridges Loop. So, like some of the races that we've seen before, Categories A and B will have the same distance, and Categories C and D will have the same distance. And let's go into those details about the distances, because you will probably want to know how long you'll be racing. Category A riders will be racing 6 laps of Two Bridges Loop, 43.1 kilometers, 26.8 miles, and that's going to be 484 meters of elevation gain, which is going to be 1,587 feet. So quite a bit of elevation gain because of this one uh, section of the route each lap, and we're going to get into that more in the recon section. As usual, there will be a segment for this race, and it will offer both FAL and FTS points. It's going to be the JWB Sprint Reverse, and that's going to be six times for categories A and B, and five times for categories C and D. So for the details for category C and D, they will be racing five laps, so one lap less than the category A and B riders. That's going to be 36 kilometers, 22.4 miles, then 403 meters, or 1,322 feet of elevation gain. Three power-ups in play this week, and it's going to be the Feather Power-Up, Drafting Boost, and the Aero Boost. The Aero Boost is going to be 34% of the power-ups, Draft is going to be 33%, and Feather is also going to be 33%. I'd say, as usual, the most useful power-up is going to be the Aero Boost, but that Featherweight power-up will come in handy um, on one part of this course. So as you just saw there, I did go up a slight incline and the route is going to start on a slight descent as you go down the ramp, but and you'll go through the power up arch where you will get your first power up and then you'll head up a slow drag and that's where things are going to start to settle down actually because riders are still going to be catching back on. You'll see some riders fly through the group, but just ignore them because they'll ease up once they get to the front because they don't want to be pulling the group. And then once you reach the top there, you'll hit the S's reverse, I believe, or it might be forward. I don't quite remember, um, but these are some rolling hills, and it reminds me a lot of Titans Grove because of how constant it is going up and down, up and down. So just be aware here, don't lose the group because it's going to be hard to catch back on with these descents, and large groups kind of just roll over the bumps, and they don't really have to do much work up the, up the climbs because they are so small that you can just use your momentum to fly up the climbs. And then as we go through these S's, just going to fast forward a bit before we get to the slight incline that's going to lead to the sprint. So in terms of bike choice, this is a pretty flat course, so you are going to want the most aero frame and wheel set that you own. The reason why I say this is because most of the points are going to be scored on the flats, and that's where things are going to really matter, and the climb really doesn't affect it that much because the speeds are still going to be pretty high. So for some that might be the Canyon Arrow, and for others that might be the Venge with the DT Swiss. It will all depend on what level you are on and how many drops that you currently own. So I would highly recommend checking out the Swift Insider link that I have linked below. It will help you decide which bike is going to be best for you. Through these S's, I highly recommend saving your power up. Don't try to use it yet because there is the sprint coming up and you're going to want to stick with them if you want to be in contention for the win. So right here is the start of the slight incline, which is actually quite a big incline and it's a huge part of this course. Um, so you're going to want to stay near the front of the group here because once you go over the top of the climb, you don't want to get separated towards the back because that's going to be horrible, especially with the sprint coming up. You'll just fly right off the back and you likely won't be seeing the front again. So really just having good positioning here and getting ready to sprint. I'd highly recommend not using your power up, no matter what power up you have, because that power up will definitely help you on the sprint. So just staying close to the front of the group on the descent and getting ready to sprint or start revving up your sprint in a little bit, I'll show you exactly when I would start my sprint. And I've done this course quite a few times with um, segment points on this part, so I do know quite a bit about where you should be starting your sprint. And right here is when things will start to ramp up, and you're going to want to start your sprint right about here because you'll want to turn your power up there, and then you'll try to get a little bit of momentum before you start flying up this part. And then this right here marks the start of this around 10 second sprint for most categories. Category A will be a bit faster, and category B, category D will be a bit slower. 
as usual at the end of the sprint, you will get another power up. So even if you are going for the sprint, I highly recommend kind of going for it because you don't want to lose the group here. And uh, as these riders come through, there's going to be a lot of momentum that will keep the pace high on the front. Something to note before going into this course is that you will be suffering on this course. There is no doubt about it because after this fast sprint, there'll be a little bit of time to regroup if you are off the back. If you're on the front, you'll try to be tracing riders who are making it back on and kind of using the slingshot effect to go straight to the front. And shortly after that, you'll have some small rollers here and there, and then you'll go up the main climb of the day, which will you will go up five times if you're in category C or D, and six times for category A and B. It's gonna be especially tough in the finishing lap because of that climb, and we're gonna get into all the details on how you can do the best possible on that climb. So heading through this section, I just recommend trying to stay as close to the front of the group as possible. I don't think there'll be any major attacks here because of the climb coming up and all the riders will know that they will need to save their energy for that part of the course. Now right here about two, just over two thirds of the way through the course, you'll hit the cl main climb of the day. You'll see that KOM start marker and that will kind of start the start mark the start of this segment and it is a slow drag at the start around three to four percent but it will kick up to around eight or nine percent towards the top of this section and before you make a turn to the overpass so i think that the best strategy or the best way to go about this section is to really just stay near the front of the group or in within the top 10 so that you can grab some riders wheels as you get closer to the climb and i'd recommend starting out a little bit easy and then really putting in that surge once it gets really steep because that's where you're going to be able to make up the most ground on the riders ahead of you and that'll help you stay near the front of the group when once this ascent starts and once this ascent starts you still have this um, kind of bypass area to catch back on the riders, but as soon as the descent starts, there will not be any more catching back on. I think that um, in the finish, there will be probably a break of around five or seven riders who are going to be the ones who are ahead, um, who are probably the best um, punchers on this course, and they'll be able to just bomb up that segment, and then if there is a big enough group, they will catch, uh, they will be caught on this descent, but if there isn't, those riders will be the ones contending for the win. Now, lighter riders, you definitely need to watch out on this descent because I've been dropped here many times. While most of you probably aren't as light as I am, it is pretty easy to get off the back on this part and it's incredibly tough to catch back on and you probably won't. Most times I don't catch back up because of the groove speeds, especially earlier on in the early laps, you will get dropped straight off the back when there is a group of around 30 or 40 riders. If you know that you can easily make it up that climb, I'd recommend saving your power up because most riders will have used their power ups, so you will have an advantage in the finishing sprint. This finishing sprint, I'd recommend waiting for one or two riders to go before starting your sprint because it, I think that it will be a longer sprint and riders will start to go from a bit further than typical. That pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, please leave that like and subscribe. It really helps support the channel and I'm trying to grow this channel to 500 subscribers. So help me meet that goal and good luck racing guys. Right on.